Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to perform the Kruskal-Wallace H test using SPSS. The Kruskal-Wallace test is the non-parametric equivalent of a one-way ANOVA. So before I get into the analysis, I want to briefly review the assumptions for ANOVA and for the Kruskal-Wallace test. In an ANOVA, the dependent variable must be continuous. You must have independence of observations, no significant outliers, homogeneity of variance, an independent variable that has two or more categorical and independent groups, and the dependent variable must be approximately normally distributed for each level of the independent variable. Now in the Kruskal-Wallis test, the assumptions are a bit different. The data points need to be independent of each other. You need to have about five data points per sample. The participants need to be selected at random from the population. And the sample sizes should be about equal. The distribution does not have to be normal. And the variances do not have to be equal in a Kruskal-Wallis test. So in this particular example, I'm selecting the Kruskal-Wallis test because the dependent variable is not continuous, it's ordinal. But first let me explain the data I have here in this data view, and then I'll explain the difference between ordinal and continuous. So we have here a participant ID. We have 90 participants. This is all fictitious data. And then we have a variable, an independent variable, named group. It has three levels, control, existential therapy, and psychodynamic therapy. And you can see that uh, this is the label, control. The number that represents that level is zero for control, one for existential, and two for psychodynamic. And then here we have a pretest and a post-test, which would be the same instrument. And this instrument is designed to measure the frequency of a particular depressive symptom. So if this were measured on a continuous scale, it would be fairly straightforward to design. Uh, this study uh, covers six months of symptoms. So you'd simply ask the participant how many times did the symptom occur in the last six months? So if a, a participant indicated 20, and another indicated 30, and then a third indicated 40, then you would know that uh, the participant that indicated 20, the f number of times the symptoms occurred would have been 20 in the last six months. And that would be 10 different from the participant that indicated 30. So that's an equal interval. It would be 10 times. And the difference between 30 and 40 would also be 10 times. Again, equal interval. That would be the preferred way to collect this type of data, but that's not always possible. And sometimes we're given data sets uh, that have already been collected using an ordinal scale. So this represents, uh, these data represent a six-point Likert scale. So 0 as a minimum and 5 as a maximum. And they're configured differently, so they're not equal interval. 0 represents no symptoms in the last six months. 1 represents that the symptoms occurred about one time in the last six months. 2 represents an occurrence of at least one symptom every three months, three represents at least one symptom a month, four at least one a week, and five at least one symptom a day. So five is clearly the highest frequency of symptoms, but there's not an equal interval established between five and four and three uh, because they're me measuring daily, weekly, monthly, and of course two every three months, and then one uh, one set of symptoms every six months. So you can rank them, but there's no equal interval. And that's why uh, th these are ordinal. 
you can see in the variable view, I have them set up as ordinal levels of measurement. The pretest and the post test are both ordinal. So to analyze the data we have using Kruskal Wallis, we want to go to non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, K independent samples. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. Kruskal Wallis H is checked off. Under options, I'm going to check descriptive. The test variable would be pretest and post-test. And then group, of course, would be the grouping variable. Now you do have to define the range here, and it would be 0 through 2, because as I mentioned earlier, 0 it represents the control group, 1, which you do want to include the analysis, represents existential, and 2, psychodynamic. So I continue and run the analysis. So this takes the independent variable group and looks for any differences that you might see between the different levels. So you can see for the pretest, I'm down here in test statistics, you can see for the pretest that we uh, have a non significant result, 0.133. So there's no statistically significant difference between the levels of the independent variable for the pretest. However, you have a highly significant result for the post test, which is 0.001. So we know we have this difference. We don't know where the difference is. So we'll run a series of Mann-Whitney U-test to determine where the difference is. Now this is going to cause an inflation in the type 1 error rate, which we're going to control for by using a Bonferroni adjustment. So we look at the number of comparisons that have to be made and we divide the alpha by that number. Now the alpha in this example, uh, and typically in the social sciences, is 5% or 0 0.05. So we know we need to compare the control group with existential, so that's one. The control with psychodynamic, that's two. And existential with psychodynamic, which is three. So we're going to divide 0 .05, 0 0.05 by three. Now that's 0 0.016 repeating. So to be a little more conservative, we're just going to say it's 0 0.015. So we'll go back to uh, the data view. Although you don't, you don't have to, you can run it from the other view. And click Analyze, Non-Parametric Test, Legacy Dialogues. And this time we're going to select Independent Samples. Before it was K Independent Samples. Now it's just independent samples. And again, we'll put pretest in anyway, uh, but post test is really what we're interested in. We'll add the descriptives. You see, this is a Man Whitney U, uh, even though the dialog box looks very similar uh, to the Kruskal Wallace. This is for the Man Whitney U test. And we're going to define the groups differently. So First, let's look at the difference between the control and existential. So you can see between the control group and the existential on the post test down here is still a statistically significant difference, even with the adjusted alpha value. It's 0 0.001, which is below 0 0.015. So it's statistically, there is a statistically significant difference between the control group and the existential group. So now we'll look at the control group when compared to the psychodynamic group. So just changing the 1 to a 2, click Continue. Everything else can remain the same. And you can see there is a statistically significant difference here as well, 0 0.009 on the post-test between control and psychodynamic. So then the last 
test we need to use to follow up is going to look at the difference between the existential group and the psychodynamic group. And here you can see it is there is not a statistically significant difference between the existential group and the psychodynamic group. And again, this is what we would expect. We would hope that the treatment uh, would be effective so that there would be a difference between the control group and both of the treatment groups. Uh, but we wouldn't necessarily expect one treatment to work in a way that it's statistically significantly different than the other treatment. So this type of outcome would be what we would expect. I hope this video on how to run a Kruskal-Wallace H-test was helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.